Hello. Good day. Welcome to the another episode on to the workflow and tips. In this week's uh, tip, uh, episode, I'm going to show you how do we get started with the cooling channel modeling or cooling analysis. Uh, it's always been a challenging when we have we don't have information. How do we get started with the in the modeling of the cooling channel, we don't have any inputs from our supplier or a tool maker to get started. Still, we want to, you know, build up the, some concept design around the cooling channel. So best approach to get started is using the default cooling channel wizard. I'll show you how to get started on that. Get into the geometry tab, uh, into the cooling circuit and it gives a pr appropriate information on to the part dimensions and specify the channel diameter to get started in this case i put the channel diameter as 8 and how far you want that part uh, those channels to be placed uh, from the from the part and i would put it as a default distance of like 25 mm and in you want to put it in a x way x uh, direction or into the y uh, direction the alignment which one in this case i have selected as y so my direction would be probably in in the y and then uh, how many number of channels for this i select as a four channel and the distance between the center of these channels uh, should be like 25 you can change it whatever the appropriate looks to be so this is like a very basic initial startup we want to see that really where i want to put my baffle bubbler or if anything cooling inserts to be needed to in this and i also decided that connect the channels with the hoses uh, to have better connectivity with that i just did the finish and you can see that it quickly creates those uh, channels and even the boundary conditions like the inputs uh, to those channels of gets assigned automatically by default it assigns like pure water and with the Reynolds number of like 10,000 you do have options of specifying pressure flow rate or we'll, we'll discuss into the later sessions how we go about that but you can see how quickly I get started uh, I have no information for my uh, supplier and I want to get started with this uh, uh, with the cooling analysis and in the process setting what I'm going to do is I for initial beginning I'm going to put as a 30 seconds as a total injection packing and cooling time uh, total cycle time uh, that's include like in 30 plus 5 total cycle time of like 35 seconds and we'll see how this results look like I already run the analysis uh, to save the time and it quickly runs so uh, since it's like a dual domain mesh and uh, 1D element, it particularly runs much faster. Uh, cooling circuit temperature, you can see uh, it's rise from say 25 to 40. And uh, we can also see the circuit metal temperature. Uh, if there is any rise in the circuit metal temperature, we can see that. The most important thing that I would definitely look for is the average part temperature. Uh, that gives me the information that which uh, area of the part uh, is still having a, like a hot spot or the cold spots particularly these lux areas those are like cold spots they are freezing much faster and uh, at the end of the cycle time of uh, I'm getting a, like an hot spot of like around like 40 or the hot area I will not call it a hot spot but uh, this is the area which is having a, like a temperature of 47 <laughs> The whatever the average temperature or the maximum part temperature, uh, what we are going to see now, uh, maximum part position or the temperature part, both of these temperatures should be below the ejection temperature. In this case, if I see a generic uh, uh, polypropylene, uh, I get the recommended processing in this tab you should get that ejection temperature for this is like 124 so whatever the cycle time that i specified of 30 seconds probably it's much higher uh, you do have a chance to reduce it but one thing to look at is that 
if we look at core side it is much much a uh, higher temperature compared to the cavity side so probably i may think of putting uh, something baffle in this area so this gives the guideline that where do i get started and where the my baffles should be there or extra cooling to be added so initially default uh, you know layout works very fine to understand that which area should be worked upon uh, where should i place any cooling inserts or baffles to be placed uh, how is the temperature on the cavity is looking how is the temperature on the core side is looking i hope uh, this session was useful to initially get started with the cooling analysis and we'll try it at your end thank you for your time